April 11th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Psalms chapters 23 and 24 from the Old Testament. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He takes me to lush pastures, he leads me to refreshing water. He restores my strength, he leads me down the right paths. For the sake of his reputation, even when I must walk through the darkest valley, I fear no danger, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff reassure me. You prepare a feast before me in plain sight of my enemies. You refresh my head with oil. My cup is completely full. Surely your goodness and faithfulness will pursue me all my days, and I will live in the Lord's house for the rest of my life. The Lord owns the earth and all it contains, the world and all who live in it. For he set its foundations upon the sea and established it upon the ocean's currents. Who is allowed to ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may go up to his holy dwelling place? The one whose deeds are blameless and whose motives are pure. Who does not lie or make promises with no intention of keeping them? Such godly people are rewarded by the Lord and vindicated by the God who delivers them. Such purity characterizes the people who seek his favor, Jacob's descendants who pray to him, Selah. Look up, you gates, rise up, you eternal doors, then the majestic king will enter. Who is this majestic king? The Lord, who is strong and mighty. The Lord, who is mighty in battle. Look up, you gates, rise up, you eternal doors. Then the majestic king will enter. Who is this majestic king? The Lord, who commands armies. He is the majestic king. Selah. God, the other day I was just reading a a sermon and it was just eloquent how they put together uh, Psalms 22, 23, and 24 um, of the gospel story. Uh, 22 of, of Jesus crying out and everyone attacking around him. And, and 23 of you bringing uh, peace and, and Jesus' acknowledgement of, of what he was called to do. And then 24, as he uh, has died, uh, taken on our sins, and then on the third day rose up to heaven, and then singing his praises as he enters heaven. It was just an amazing sermon, and I think sometimes we focus so much on just one thing, say Psalms 23, and we know that by heart. In fact, it was even a little bit hard to read a different version that I used to saying because I've memorized obviously most of us have Psalm 23 Um, but I think that speaks to to a bigger uh, goal that all of us should have which is the totality of the Bible to not just focus in on Psalm 23 and, and have that just tucked away inside of our heart but to really move outside of our comfort zone into a place of of knowing what 22 and 24 are about um and maybe even 21 and 25 in that process as well. Because all of your words in your Bible are breathed out to us by you. I was talking to somebody the other day and I was telling them how the Bible was a love story that you wrote. It's like every moment I can get, I want to go and read my Bible because you've written me a love letter. And just like any woman here on earth opening up her email and seeing a a love letter from her beloved or in the olden days (laughs) opening up our our mailboxes and seeing a love letter from their beloved god to me the bible is the same thing it is your love letter to us and i just can't wait to read more i can't wait to to understand more of it Uh, i can't wait to talk to you about it in prayer even though you know I hate writing, I do love figuring things out and writing things down on paper and uh, piecing together uh, different ideas and getting into the reason behind why you wrote this amazing love letter for us. Sometimes it's with great humility that I read 
the Bible. Sometimes it's with great joy. Sometimes it's with great sadness that I read some of the stories. But through it all, all of it was written for us. God, today I just wanted to thank you for writing such an amazing, powerful love letter to all of us. And as you know, my heart is really heavy right now with the people who don't know how much you love them, who are pushing you away, rejecting you, even fellow Christians who have chosen the path of the world over you have pushed away your teachings. God, I just pray that they will find their way back to this love letter you have written for us, that they will ask you to share with them the love that's in it, the teaching that's in it, the guidance that is in it. I heard somebody say the other day that they don't read the Bible because of fear. It was a very, very valid point. Um, <laughs> because as soon as you start reading, there's some work to be done. There's a lot of work to be done. So it's a valid concern, but God, I know that you can take that away and replace it with eagerness and excitement and eventually the incredible thrill and love of reading your word. Your word used to be very scary to me. It used to be something I didn't understand. I didn't want to read. It used to be a chore. Now, I'm very thankful. Now it is a love letter. A very powerful love letter. A love letter like I will never, ever have in my entire life except from you. God, thank you for all of these powerful verses, some that we know by heart, some that we may be hearing for the first time, some we may have heard a trillion times and are hearing in a new way right now. That's what's so awesome about this love letter is it's personalized for each and every one of us. Thank you. I love you so much. In your son's name I pray. Amen. <laughs>